I have always been a big fan of The Simpsons, and in the past few months on YouTube, there have been a lot of iceberg videos. The first one that most people saw was Nish Taz's Mario 64 iceberg video. And after seeing that, I've always wanted to do one. And since I'm a big fan of The Simpsons, I decided to do one of The Simpsons. Specifically, this one. By Reddit user Freakin Epic Lois. The post link will be in the description if you're interested in checking it out. If you don't know how these iceberg videos work, I'll start at the top of the iceberg with the most well-known things and then work my way down to the bottom where there are things that people don't know and are very obscure. I just want to say huge thanks to the people over at the Simpsons Wiki. I got a decent amount of my information there, and if you're interested in learning more about these topics, then I suggest check it out. Uh, let's get into it. First layer. Seasons 1 to 10. I'm guessing this is on here as these are the most well-known seasons, as everyone has an episode from these seasons that they love. For me, it's Season 6's Round Springfield. Predicting the future. Of course, in case you didn't know, there have been many times where the Simpsons writers have predicted the future, the most well-known being Trump becoming president, which I debunked in this video. Other examples of this are FaceTime, 9-11, and even COVID. Now, I don't think that they have predicted the future. I mean, after over 700 episodes, there are a lot of stories that have been told, and a very small group of them have happened to become true. The movie. Just like seasons 1 to 10, everybody knows that there was a Simpsons movie. Not much more to be said about it. Simpsons did it. This can be referring to two things. The first being that fans of The Simpsons say, Simpsons did it, when the plot point of a TV show is very, very similar to something The Simpsons did. Or it can be referring to the South Park episode titled, The Simpsons Already Did It. It happened because when the writers finished the episode, someone pointed out that it has a very, very similar plot to an earlier episode of The Simpsons. Dead Bart. Dead Bart is a creepypasta relating to The Simpsons, in which it is said that there's a missing episode from the very first season, titled Dead Bart. It is said that the episode of Dead Bart starts off just like any other episode, but the characters are very emotional and just a bit off. The family then takes a plane ride, and Bart is messing around, as he does, and then breaks a window of the plane and is sucked out of the broken window. Then the audience is shown a very disturbing image of Bart's corpse. Afterwards, the family is all crying over Bart's death. Then, one year skips, and they're still in the same position, still crying, and are very, very skeletal. And there's no sign of Maggie, Santa's little helper, or Snowball, too. And they visit his grave, and the credits roll. This, in my opinion, is very dumb. Although The Simpsons was new, and it broke boundaries, I don't think that this could have happened. And that's why it's called a creepypasta, I guess. Tapped Out. The Simpsons Tapped Out is a mobile game made by EA, in which an explosion happens and you rebuild the town of Springfield. Steamed Hands. In the season 7 episode, 22 short films about Springfield, there's a segment titled Skinner and the Superintendent, in which Superintendent Chalmers goes to Skinner's house for some lunch. And Skinner burns the lunch and runs to the Krusty Burger behind his house for some food. He then refers to the burgers as steamed hams because before he said that they were going to have steamed clams. But somehow it became a meme 20 years later. Couch guys. 
at the end of most opening sequences, there's a thing called a couch gag. They are, even in the three of four episodes, they have always been pretty cool, except some of the early ones are a bit short and bland. Next layer. Bongo Comics. Bongo Comics was a comic book publishing company founded by Matt Groening in 1993. The main reason for it was to make comics about The Simpsons, but then made comics about other shows like Futurama and even Spongebob. It made over 350 Simpsons comics and over 500 comics in general. But in 2018, it was announced that Bongo Comics would be shut down after the 245th issue of the main Simpsons comic line, Futurama. Futurama was a cartoon made by Simpsons creator Matt Groening. The show focused on Philip J. Fry as he was frozen for 1,000 years and now lives in the 31st century with his nephew, a mutant named Leela, a robot named Bender, and many more. I really liked Futurama, and I was glad it got a second chance and got a proper ending. In season 26 of The Simpsons, there was even a Futurama crossover titled Simpsonama. Blacksmithers. In the third episode of the show, Homer's Odyssey, Wayland Smithers appeared as a black man with gray hair. But this was changed in every episode after, so he was yellow with brown hair. There have been a couple of reasons for this. The most commonly heard is that the animation studio just messed up the coloring of him. But I have also heard that he was originally going to be black, but then this was changed because they thought it would be in poor taste to have a black man be an assistant of a wealthy white man. Though Homer's Odyssey was too far in development to change that. Hit and Run. Simpsons Hit and Run was a game released for the PS2, GameCube, and original Xbox. And also Windows. It was essentially a Simpsons-style GTA. I never personally played it, but from what I can tell, it's a very cool game. Eventually, I will get it and play through it. And who knows, I might be able to make a video on my experience with the game. Seasons 11 to 19. Just like what I said earlier, I think that these seasons are so high up because, although not the golden era, they are still well known, possibly why they are in the level lower than seasons 1 to 10. Original Homer and Krusty Plan Homer Simpson and Herschel Krustowski look very much alike. Homer is crusty without the makeup. Originally, the plan for these two was to have Bart hate Homer and idolize Krusty. You may be thinking, well, that's the same thing that we have now. But no, there's going to be a twist. Homer was actually going to be crusty. Hence why they look so alike. This was even made into an episode of season 6 called Homer the Clown. God has five fingers. Like most cartoons, everyone on The Simpsons has four fingers, except God for some reason. I assume it could be because he's God. I don't know. Do the Bartman. Do the Bartman was a song on the 1990s album, The Simpsons Sing the Blues. It features Nancy Cartwright as Bart and Michael Jackson as himself. To be honest, it's a pretty good song. And it's catchy. Graining's initials on Homer's head. Matt Graining's initials are MG, if you didn't know. In Homer's head, there are those letters. You can see the M in his hair. Now, the G, I personally find a little harder to find. I had a difficult time finding this when I first heard of it and sometimes still struggle with it today. That G is in his ear, if you were wondering. Simpsons Ride At Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal Studios Florida, there is a Simpsons Ride. It opened on May of 2008, and is actually still open today. It is classified as a motion simulator ride. This means that you are sitting down, and being moved in circular motion along a virtual plane. 
whatever that means. The voice actors from the show actually voice their characters in this ride. The ride focuses on Krusty Land and Sideshow Bob as he tries to take revenge on the Simpsons family and Krusty the Clown. Springfield State. The town of Springfield State that the Simpsons live in is confusing. It is known to border an ocean, a mountain range, and even a forest. Also, in the movie, it is said to border Ohio, Nevada, Maine, and Kentucky, which obviously no state borders all of them. And another thing, in the episode Kill the Alligator and Run, they say they aren't allowed in any of the 50 states. See? I told you it was confusing. Maybe I can make a video on it sometime. I don't know. Allman Shorts The Simpsons started on the Tracy Allman Show as shorts. From 1987 to 1989, there were a total of 48 of those shorts before the Simpsons series was spun off into its own. The shorts are very easy to find. In fact, I think you can watch all of them on YouTube. Some of them have been in episodes of The Simpsons, like in the 130th episode Spectacular. There were five shorts played, some of them in their entirety and some just in portions. Those five being the very first short, Good Night, The Perfect Crime, Space Patrol, World War Three, and Bath Time. Also, to celebrate the 400th episode, You Can't Always Say What You Want, the opening was replaced by a short of The Family Portrait. Waterfinger Commercials In the late 80s, right before The Simpsons became its own show, Bart was featured in Butterfinger commercials. Whether that be for Butterfingers or Butterfinger Phoebes, he would be in them as their spokesperson. There are over 35 of these different commercials, usually featuring Homer trying to steal Butter's Butterfinger. Then Bart stopping Homer in some kind of way. Fun fact, Bart's friend Millhouse was actually created for these commercials. But the creators liked him so much that they decided to keep him around and make him a recurring character on the show. Some of these commercials have been released on complete season DVDs also. Next layer. Seasons 20 to 32. Like what I said before, most people know that Substance has gone on for this long, but less people have seen these seasons. So I'm guessing that's why they're this far down compared to the other two. Michael Jackson did his own voice. In the season 3 premiere, Stark Raving Dad, character Leon Kampowski is a mental patient that thinks he's Michael Jackson. For this episode, Michael Jackson did the lines of Leon Kampowski. Although he couldn't do the singing due to copyright issues, they had a voice copy do the singing bits. So yes, Michael Jackson, in a way, did play himself on The Simpsons. Life in Hell Life in Hell is a comic strip made by Matt Groening. It ran weekly from 1977 all the way to 2012. The comic focused on a set of anthropomorphic rabbits named Blinky, Shiva, and Bongo, and also had a gay couple named Akbar and Jeff. The strip of what Matt Groening was originally going to pitch to be the shorts on Tracy Ullman. But in fear of losing the rights to his comic, he had decided to make The Simpsons in about five minutes. DVD commentaries. On the complete season DVD releases, there are commentaries for every episode, whether that be including producers, writers, voice actors, directors, or special guests. I really like them as they are a way of hearing how the episode was made. And they're always a plus on a new season of The Simpsons DVD. Underachiever and proud of it. I believe this is a reference to the t-shirt and how it ended up getting banned because the school administrators did not like it. But I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on that. Simpsons were designed in James L. Brooks's lobby. Like I said earlier, the Simpsons were designed a mere minute before Matt Groening pitched them to James L. Brooks for the Tracy Ullman show. 
he used his family's names to name the characters, except for his own. For that, he used Bart, which is an anagram of Brat. Blue Shirt Bart. In the 90s, Bart, for some reason, always wore a blue shirt in the merchandise, and not his normal red shirt that he wears in the series. Many theorized that it was just another one of those early Simpsons mistakes, like Black Smithers, Black Hair Mo, or the upside down background in the premiere. But, no. Most merchandise is made before a show or movie comes out. So, the merchandise companies most likely went with a design for the character named Bart in the early designs when he had a blue shirt. Rumpus Room. The Simpsons Rumpus Room is a room in the back right corner of the first floor of the Simpsons house in the forbidden hallway behind the garage. This room first appeared in the episode Itchy, Scratchy, and March, but is more usually seen in Three Men in the Comic Book. This room is barely ever seen within the series, as it isn't really needed. Think about it. This room has a TV in it, but why would they go in there to watch TV? They could just watch it in the TV room. This room has a bunch of toys in it, but why would the kids go in there to play when they have their own rooms and the rest of the house? They don't need a room specifically for toys. Also, apparently the room disappears. Michael Jackson wrote Do the Bartman. Michael Jackson actually co-wrote Do the Bartman with singer Brian Lauren. Thank you for watching. I will be splitting this iceberg up into three parts as it would be a huge video if they were all combined. And I would upload for a while. So, I figured it would be better to release it in free. If you liked this video and would like to see more, please subscribe. And like the video. It helps me out a lot. Bye.